yours. Wow, it's great to be here, um, both here in Spain, but also here in Enlighted. I'm excited to have this conversation. I know it will be quick, but I'm lucky that I can build off of the great speeches and presenters that have come before me. I know one of the times I go to a lot of these conferences around the world, we say a lot of the same thing, which sometimes is frustrating because it's clear that we understand the issues. The world has changed, the dynamics are changed, but I'm hopeful gonna try to shift mindset on a number of things. I'll start with the, the subtitle of today's conference, Reinventing Education in a Digital World. That's scary. Reinvention is scary. What does that mean to an educator or a school leader or a system or a parent, certainly a student? The dynamics of change starts with recognizing a simple concept, learning, how all of us learn, how certainly our students learn, has fundamentally and forever changed. How we use information, where do we get it? What exists? How do we connect, collaborate? How we participate in the world has changed. The workplace we're preparing students for has changed. So when we think about re reinventing education, recognize the two hardest things have already been changed for us. The way in which we learn and the world in which we're preparing students for. So de-stress the reinvention as it relates to what it means for schools and shift on the reality that's already changing for your students. We know the Industrial Revolution is here and many of us already in this conference have shared that. The thing to note though, this is a journey towards humanity. Thinking about the dynamics here requires a focus on education. In each of these segments, the need for quality teachers, integrated and innovative pedagogy, the value of graduates to fuel economies and the dependencies for students in the economy has grown through this transformation that exists everywhere around the world and in every industry. This is all going to change when we change mindset. And I've been around the world and I've been to tons of schools and universities around the world. Until we change our mindset on the approach, we're not gonna change the opportunity that we have in front of us. And we're not gonna maximize the potential for technology to unleash the greatness in every student. Now, mindset is true for every phase. If you wanna build a data-driven organization, you're not going to do that without establishing a data-driven culture. You could spend lots of times on technology plans, building plans, acquisition plans, and think about the documentation, the meetings, et cetera. How many meetings, how many plans, how many documents do we have on changing the culture, changing the mindset in the organization? For those of you who are educators, we can do a quick exercise. You can close your eyes, you can think of something, keep your mind clear. I'm gonna say a few words, get a sense of how you react when I say them, okay? So everyone ready? Your students are learning without you, okay? Now this is the mindset, this is the mindset moment. Do you feel good about that statement? No, most teachers, most educators around the world don't like that statement. Oh my God, what does this mean? My students are learning without me, what does that mean? If I said, your students are reading without you, they're studying without you, they're writing without you, they're collaborating without you, they're playing without you, you're okay, well, those, that doesn't feel so scary. You can even feel yourself detensed when I say those words. But students are learning without me, why does that change? The reality is th the fact that students are learning without you makes you a better educator. It makes you more empowered to shift the boundaries of your learning and potential. We've gotta shift our mindset constantly and rethink the way in which we feel and recognize that teachers are afraid and often feel displaced. The world of work requires new capabilities and the role of an educator in human history has never been more needed because displacement based on the trends that are happening around the workplace is real and it requires us to bring urgency to reskilling and upskilling and preparing the future generation of students. This is not a technology transformation. I will be the, the technology representative on the stage who says this clearly and definitively, this is not about technology. 
I will assure you technology is going to continue to innovate regardless of how we transform. It's going to make things easier. It's going to make things faster, cheaper for schools. We're not going to reach the potential that we have to transform education across the world until we recognize it's about people. It's about unleashing in a purposeful way the talent of students. It's about empowering educators to be heroes, to be respected as heroes in our society, and to recognize their role is valued. Now, it starts with, with, with people. We've got to bring a hacking culture to drive change. This is important. As leaders, as you think about reinvention, reinvention starts with discovery. It starts with being bold. It starts with changing the status quo. Bring that culture into your schools, into your classrooms, into the plan as you go forward. Now, this is about people. This is about mindset. But I also know that I want to talk about technology. That's what I was asked to do, to talk about the role of digital in this world. And certainly, the recognition that technology can, can accelerate the change is real. I'm not going to debate that for sure. I would just say that we're limiting technology because we don't put people first. But let's talk a little bit about technology. Why is this important? The world has changed. We know that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the world has changed. But the way in which the world has changed with technology is important. Data. The power and availability of data is changing and driving this transformation. It's the area that most schools are doing, trying to do, doing badly, aspiring to change. Um, a couple of exercises on data. There's lots of it in schools, but not enough of it. We have lots stored, but no one knows where it is. There's lots of big data estates and lots of data across disparate systems. The simplest thing that I like to do with data, and I get a chance to see this when I visit schools, when I, I often get a chance to visit the first day of schools. We're often in schools the first day of education. I get a chance to see students meeting their teacher for the first time. Think about your own children when they meet their teacher for the first time. The teacher knows very little about your students, your children. They know the name, maybe the grade history before. Think about the last day of school when they're saying tearful goodbyes to those kids. And then think about it repeating again the next grade year. So we have data. Data is collected. It's put in graphs and charts and spreadsheets, et cetera. But the real foundation for data is not carried from one teacher to the next. We're not building a continuum of insight to drive change. We're not preparing educators to drive instruction in the proper way. We've got to think differently about how we use data and shift the data-driven culture. A phrase that's commonly used is data is the new oil. This is very, very true today. Data is a commodity. It's a precious resource in every culture, in every company, and certainly in every education institution. Like oil, it needs to be refined to fuel, to drive change. You need to refine its use in the classroom. Like oil, if it gets out, if it's leaking, if it spills, it's bad. So you've got to make sure data is safe, protected, secure, that you've got the right ethical use of data in the classroom. But when we do this, and we have a new way of, of changing the way data can fuel learning, you can change outcomes. Now, data is connected to a convergence that's happening in technology. Technology has been in classrooms since I started with this, as, as, uh, on my journey at Microsoft and certainly before that. But it's the convergence of big data and data availability powered by the advancements in AI and the availability of cloud that's changing everything and requires us to think differently about using data to drive insight, using data to predict where we need to go, what information that an educator or a learner is going to need. And this convergence is really part of five key waves that are changing everything. Now, the rise of AI, and many people feel like AI is a scary element because of its impact on job displacement. Many of you probably say, well, AI is great, but it's also bad because there's going to be a lot of people out of work. There's probably many, many examples in human history of technology shifting people out of work. The reality is, in all that case, technology sparks new innovation, new opportunities for jobs and job creation. Many of the jobs that are most growing 
today we didn't know existed five or six years ago. That's going to continue to take place. The shift with this continuum, though, that's worse and more scary is not the impact on job displacement. It's the reality of talent gaps that exist. Think about all these continuums, artificial intelligence, lots of students are studying and interested. Fewer are studying Internet of Things. Even fewer understand how to program in the dimensions of augmented and virtual reality. Fewer understand blockchain. And even fewer are studying quantum computing. These are drivers to fuel innovation, to change economies, certainly to shift workplace. But innovation will be stalled without the talent to fuel these areas. Certainly, as we think about the presence of technology and the immersion of technology, there's lots we can do. But we need to think about the purposefulness of technology to change. And I'm going to show a quick video talking about probably the least known of those things. Most of you probably know, OK, I know a little bit about blockchain, and I know a little bit about artificial intelligence and Internet of Things, but not quantum computing I'm not sure about. Quantum computing has the potential to change the world and we need to unleash the potential it has in our classrooms. So learn a little bit more about quantum computing and what's happening. talk about quantum computing, it's a completely different game. Quantum computing will enable us to solve problems that currently take longer than the lifetime of the universe in seconds, hours, or days. We completely reconceive the space in which we do computation. Quantum computing is like going from crawling to going to a different planet. It's different. It's only natural that we would want to use the world's most powerful device to combat the world's most challenging problems. We can attack global warming. Security. What are the boundaries of machine learning? Fighting diseases. The possibilities of quantum computers are endless. Microsoft has the best and the brightest working on this problem really happening. Progress is very fast. And we're building a quantum computer. What the world wants to know is what happens when we turn the machine on. What problems will be solvable with a computer that computes in a billion parallel universes at the same time? It's real, and it's coming. Um, Certainly, we're going to have an opportunity to change the world and solve some of the challenges. Student voice on climate change is starting to bubble. And tools like quantum computing is going to help arm students with the capabilities they're going to need. That's why the urgency on driving change is real. Artificial intelligence is changing the world we live, but it's actually making us more human, making technology understand us making it easier for us to communicate, overcome accessibility challenges, bringing the spectrum across our classrooms. I'm going to share an example of artificial intelligence that often may seem scary and maybe in fundamental, the way in which it's described, artificial, to give a practical example of how artificial intelligence is really changing and really applying to the world of education, the world of learning, the world of our planet. The study of snow leopards is taking place around the world. There's an organization called Snow Leopard Trust, where Microsoft has been working with, to solve a, a fundamental challenge that they've been having with regards to data insight and collection on the habitats and the environments of snow leopards. There's about roughly about a 5,000 population of existing snow leopards uh, left on the planet, mostly in Central Asia. Now, the snow leopards are hard. They're fast animals. They're very good at hiding and, and uh, 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 and using their environment to their advantage. So it's very, very difficult for the scientists to study. They set up cameras twice a year 
to collect images. These are cameras that you would find in a traffic stop, et cetera. As motion happens, they take photos. And sometimes you get a nice front, you know, a curious snow leopard looking at the camera. Uh, sometimes they're just fl fleeing away, et cetera. But what ends up happening is hundreds of thousands of photos in a week or so get uh, consumed by this camera setup, and they would do these once every quarter or so, once or twice a year. And the challenge for scientists is going through these photos. Sometimes the cameras are picking up animals, four-legged animals, maybe similar structural, skeletal structure to a snow leopard, but not useful for the researchers. Oftentimes, it's images like this, where there's no data to be found. Sometimes there is a picture that may be an image that doesn't have any useful information to a researcher, but if you really look, you can find the snow leopard hiding in the picture. In some cases, you go through, I see a tail leaving the screen. In some cases here, the snow leopard is looking right at us, and we may have missed it. Now, as I go through these images, think back to the, the input put I said on data for schools. This is what goes on in classrooms. We may be seeing a student failing, looking right at us, but we don't have the data, the time, the insight to fix it. Some cases, the data is fuzzy. Sometimes the data is fleeting or dark. But one is true is there's a lot of it. So imagine this potential where we're collecting information, we're not connecting enough of it. It's consumed across things that are easy and hard to solve for educators. We've got to use technology like AI, like we're doing for these scientists, to detect snow leopards within seconds versus tools that took weeks and months of hundreds of people to, to dissect thousands and hundreds of thousands of images. We can use advanced technologies to help learners, to help provide insight, to enable educators to do what they do, not to replace a teacher, but to enable a teacher to use technology as a tool for insight and understanding. This is the way in which we need to apply the world of learning into our classrooms. This is the way technology steps up to enable the talent of students to face with energy and confidence some of the most important challenges that we face on the planet. That's what this is about. It's not about reinventing education. It's about equipping students to embrace the change that's happening on the planet. And technology, when it's properly used, can be a tool. Now, we just published a course this week, uh, AI Business School for Education. This is a course that's available for free, which includes educators from around the world. And this is perfect for leaders who are building an AI strategy, for educators, even for students who want to understand AI's implication on their future. Um, and it's produced with support of great education leaders who are applying AI actively in their schools today. So I just put this up just as a resource and certainly can share more. All of this is, for us is about nurturing talent. As an employer, our innovation path to fuel technology is dependent on people. The companies that we serve, the partners that we work with, have the same challenge. Now, the good news is, as someone who travels around the world, this is the least part of the challenge. I will tell you, I've learned two things in my world of education. I, don't, I, I learn everything. I learn lots of things every day. Two things that are not changed from the day I started working in education till today is teachers are great, and they're not the issue in any country, every cult, uh, culture. We may sometimes blame teachers. It's not them. And don't underestimate the power of students to raise your expectation, to lift what's possible beyond what you even expected. This happens to me on a daily basis. This is a notebook from a 13-year-old girl, Victoria, that I met in Puerto Rico just a couple of weeks ago. It looks like a, a typical notebook of a 13-year-old girl, you may think, on the study. 
she came running up to me in her school wanting to show me this notebook. And when I first saw it, I said, okay, this is going to be great. There's going to be some, some nice notes that she has, maybe a story that she wants to share, etc. And then she started opening up the notebook. And I literally, this is pages of this. She is working on predictive analytics and algorithms to help understand the implications of hurricanes to uh, protect and support her country after Hurricane Maria. And this is a 13-year-old girl who's often learning in the context of her education, but she's learning with resources, she's learning from others, and embracing technology to solve something that's meaningful to her and her family. I had a chance in Paris a, a, a couple of months ago to introduce a 15-year-old girl. Her name is Brianna Gopal. She walked on stage. There was a room like this with teachers from all over the world. And she started talking about her work using AI and quantum computing to cure heart disease. And I get a chance to meet students like this all around the world. And by the way, they're not strange. They're not prodigies. This is the potential we have in every classroom. When I visit your schools and I visit schools in Spain, I say, say one thing, or two things. One thing teachers like, the other they may not like. The first thing I will tell students is to find an object in the classroom that they see every day and put a mental note that every time they see that object, to remember to expect more. Expect more from their family, their schools, their education system, themselves, to achieve more and recognize that anything is possible. Shift student mindset. The other thing I tell students that teachers may not like is to question everything. Question why we learn everything we learn. Question what's in the test. Not so we can get the right answers, but why are we assessing what we're assessing and how they can fuel their own future. Be purposeful in learning. Now, student agency has been a big part of our focus. This is growing in society, and it's something that we need to unleash. And I'll share, this is not only important in the world of education, it's been foundational to Microsoft. Our education journey has been fueled by a focus on finding and unleashing student agency. And I'll give you a couple of examples. These are four acquisitions Microsoft has ma made in our recent history, many of you which you may not, may not even realize Microsoft acquired. All of them have been trying to solve the issues with regards to employability, workplace gaps, and addressing student agency. It starts with Minecraft. How do we unleash creative learning grit with students to overcome problems and challenges in their classroom? How do we prepare them to think differently about learning and collaboration in a purposeful way to move on a world of work where LinkedIn comes along? How do we help them to purposely connect and communicate in a world of technology to share, to solve problems, to address the issues that the world is facing? That's where GitHub comes in. And lastly, Flipgrid is about sharing and accelerating student voice, a tool that educators can use in the classroom on a mobile device to extend learning beyond the classroom, to unleash the potential in all students to contribute, to collaborate, and to share their passion and ideas. This is guiding the work that we need to do. It needs to guide the work that schools do to drive this reinvention. It's not about technology. It's about truly unleashing student voice. I feel good about the work that we have, and I'm certainly going to highlight the role of teachers and end with this. Um, in, in all the conversations I have with education, we've got to remember the value and importance of educators as we go forward. When we do this, when we bring together great thinking and great leaders, with courage and conviction to drive change, there's nothing that can't change in ourselves, in our schools, and our classrooms. Reinvention in education, it starts with us, it starts with leaders, it starts with people, and it starts with shifting mindset on teachers, on students, the purposefulness of technology and how it's used to drive real change. Thanks for the work that you're doing here in Enlight Ed. Thanks for the work that you do every day to connect and collaborate. Uh, I will be spending 30 hours connecting with students on the classroom on the Microsoft Global Learning Connection, where we use digital tools to reach out to students and learn. I encourage you to join me. Get a camera, turn on a student, connect to a classroom, hear and listen about the great potential. You'll know, as I do, and I get a chance to learn, around, learn about this every day, that we have a bright future in all economies, in all countries, when we can unleash the talent within our classrooms. Thank you.